Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the second week of the Butcher Block Talks webinar series. Um, so just as a reminder, we had last week um, talking about the $5 million CARES, um, the CARES grant. Um, and that webinar um, was available. If you would like a recording of that, please reach out to me and I can make sure to get that to you. Um, and then this week we have Kyle Peters and Terry Labrie from uh, the South Dakota Governor's Office of Economic Development. And they're going to be speaking with us about the different programs that um, their office has to offer. So with that, um, I'll turn it over to Kyle and Terry. Thank you, Christina. Uh, this is Kyle Peters. I am the Senior Business Development Rep for the Governor's Office of Economic Development. So what that means is I manage the projects on the east side of the river. Um, I've been with GUED for just about two and a half years now. I came in with the Nome administration uh, back in 2019. Um, and ever since, I've been loving GUED. It's, uh, it's a great organization. And we do a lot of work that people Sometimes don't know about, we fly under the radar quite a bit, but uh, certainly have an impact on South Dakota. So a little bit about me, um, I am a farm and ranch boy raised in White Lake, South Dakota. My folks still farm there. Um, we have a cow-calf operation, so pretty well involved in agriculture and I still work with my parents on the farm quite a bit. Um, but yeah, um, a lot of people don't really know what GUED is. So I'd like to give just a quick uh, summary of what we do and the impact that we have. Um, the Governor's Office of Economic Development specializes in recruiting out-of-state businesses to the state and growing our in-state businesses through our partner relations and our secondary financing programs. Um, GUED's mission is to recruit companies with good paying jobs and benefits and to expand the property tax base in South Dakota. And then kind of as a catch-all, we like to improve the quality of life for all South Dakotans. So if the economy is good, usually everybody's in a better situation because of that. Um, just to recap a little bit of 2020, what we've done, um, the Governor's Office of Economic Development helped facilitate $2.8 billion in total capital investment. That's 2.8 billion, not, not million. So a big impact there. Um, these wins come from manufacturing, distribution, housing, technology, energy, and agriculture. Um, in 2020, we had 27 prospect visits um, in the state. That's what we call hostings when a company comes to the state just to check everything out, see if it'd be a good fit for them. So we had 27 of those companies come here, which was a pretty significant number considering the year we had in 2020. Um, we sent out 63 financing proposal letters. Uh, a proposal letter is an outline of what we think we can do subject to an application of our uh, finance team. And then we conducted just under 400 R&E visits. So R&E visits are retention and expansion visits. Those are really, really critical visits that we do with our in-state companies to make sure things are going smoothly. And it, it throws a red flag up if we are at a visit and they say, hey, this isn't working very well for us. Uh, is there anything you can do to help us? Because we don't want those companies to, to leave the state. So if there's something that we can do, we want to make sure we address that. Um, and then finally, in 2020, we announced that 60 companies were either moving or expanding here in South Dakota. So we're pretty proud of that, um, especially during a year that we would not consider normal. Um, then just bumping over to some ag stats here. It's, it's not a question that ag is our largest industry. Um, in 2020, we had $32.5 billion of economic activity through processing ag, or excuse me, pr production ag and ag processing. Production agriculture is a higher percentage of our economy, economy by gross domestic product than any other state in the country. So just thought I'd give you a quick recap of what we do and, and what we've done in 2020. Uh, we are a staff of about 30 people, so we're not a big staff, but we're usually all over the state doing work. So, um, but switching gears over to meat, meat processing, you know, and Terry can speak to this a little bit too, but during the pandemic, we've seen a huge increase of people reaching out and asking about our programs for meat processing. You know, as many of you probably noticed, you know, trying to find meat in retail stores was pretty difficult as packing plants were being shut down or paused during the pandemic through COVID outbreaks. So during that time, we received several phone calls you know, from producers especially who were looking to set up their own processing shop to take control of the supply and their market 
um, and kind of put the problem in their hands. They wanted to process their, their critters, whether that be hogs or beef or, or chicken. Um, and they wanted to try to market that product themselves. And so the other inquiries we received were from small butcher shops who were looking to up their game a little bit. They were looking to expand to take on more uh, critters per week. So, you know, for instance, we had several people who were maybe butchering on the side that were looking to, you know, make that more of a, a business rather than just a favor that they were doing for a friend. Um, and so from those inquiries, we sensed the trend was growing. Um, and so GUED, with the help of the Animal Industry Board here in the state, uh, came up with a step-by-step -step guidelines for potential locker plant. Um, and so I'm going to share my screen and kind of go through those steps a little bit. And this is by, a, not, by no means a one-stop shop. This is just something that we put together to make the process a little bit lighter um, for these producers. So can you guys see my screen? Terry, can you give me a yes or a no? You can? Okay. So this is just a, a quick step-by-step -step, uh, piece that we put together. Um, you know, obviously we want to start with a good business plan. Um, you guys, for those of you who haven't heard, the Small Business Development Center in South Dakota can help business owners or future business owners put a business plan together for free. Um, they are funded through some through our state, some through federal funds. And so they are an entity that is free to you. You can walk in there and say, hey, I have an idea. I'd like to put a business plan together. Can you guys help me? Um, and the answer is yes. It is kind of varied by region. There are um, small business development center locations by region. So if you're in Beetle County, I think that goes to Aberdeen. If you're in the Sioux Falls area, there's a Sioux Falls office and same for out west in Rapid City. Um, but you know, your typical business plan, how many employees, what your equipment needs, size and layout of facility, projections, market analysis, and business models. So the SBDC um, is a great resource that not many people know about, but the ones that do, they say a lot of good things about them. So I would encourage you to visit with them if you do have a potential idea in your head. Um, and then step two is to work with an engineer to determine your utility needs. You know, that's probably not imperative that you have to hire an engineering company. A lot of the times these small communities have local EDOs that you can work with to um, help address some of these needs, whether it be, you know, water, wastewater, natural gas, but that really depends on the size of your facility. Um, and, you know, in the natural gas thing, if you need natural gas for your operation, that limits, you know, some communities that you can do this in, because as you know, not every community in South Dakota has access to natural gas. Um, and then step three, I can't stress this one enough. I think a lot of the bottleneck for people is they do one and two, but they don't do three simultaneously. And so I'm not, this isn't really a, okay, do step one check, step two check. These are almost simultaneously. Um, and so I can't stress it enough to reach out to the Animal Industry Board if you have an idea to see what the application process is for either a custom exempt um, shop or a state inspected shop, you know, reach out to them and say, you know, I have this idea. What does it look like? What does the application look like? What's the timeline look like? Because the last thing that you want is to build is to build a beautiful process actually process uh, critters. So step four, when you have identified your utility needs in your, in your space, start identifying land. You know, I think a lot of people have in mind the location that they want to be before any of this all happens, but certainly land is a big piece to make sure that you have the utilities tapped for that piece of property. Um, and then step five, begin your conversations with local officials to start the permitting process, depending on where you're at. You know, you'll likely need a conditional use permit to build um, in either your city or your county. Um, and then step six, you know, I wish this was step one. We want to hear if, if we can help you guys. So, you know, reach out to GOED. Um, my contact information is here. A lot of the processing uh, has come to me in the last year because I'm the value added egg rep. Uh, so I have to know a little bit about what's going on to keep up with everybody. Um, but we recently split up the East and the West River. So like I said, I manage the East side of the river and Lori Frederick is the senior business development rep for the West side of the river. Um, so depending on where you're at, we will likely coordinate you with the rep accordingly, but I can certainly be your first call to talk through things. 
Um, then step seven is the fun part, purchase the land and, and begin the construction. So that's kind of the step-by-step -step process for that. You know, it's not a one-stop shop, like I was saying, but it's certainly a good, a good way to start. And I can share this document with whomever. I can share it with Christina and she can forward it or however we want to do that. But, you know, this past year has been interesting. It's been fun, but it's also been interesting in terms of the economic development successes we've seen and, and how a pandemic has really changed our targeted industries. I would say one of our main targeted industries right now is uh, meat processing. So if there's anything I can do to help, my contact information is there. And uh, I'll turn it over to Terry to talk a little bit about uh, programs. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Um, so like Kyle mentioned, my name is Terry Labrie. I am a senior loan officer here at the Governor's Office of Economic Development. Um, I've been in the office for a couple years, uh, similar to Kyle. Um, I think he he's beat me out here by a couple months maybe, but um, I was transferred over uh, from the South Dakota Department of Agriculture. So I was the finance administrator there for about 15 years. So I'm well familiar with all of the um, agricultural financial programs. And then additionally, one of the benefits of the ag finance programs coming over to the governor's office of economic development is now we have additional programs for agriculture to include all of the uh, economic development uh, business loans as well. So we have a plethora of, of programs here that I'm going to touch on a little bit. Um, as Kyle mentioned, one of the main things that we want you guys to do when you're starting to uh, think about getting into meat processing is visit with the Small Business Development Center because whether or not the governor's office um, of economic development is going to help finance or your bank, everybody's going to want a business plan. We want to know exactly what you plan to do. The Small Business Development Center can also help you with projections. Um, and we require three-year projected um, balance sheets and financial statements for most of our programs. So um, just keep that in mind when you're working with uh, the Small Business Development Center. And again, we can't stress, stress enough that you should be working with the business development rep early on in this process. Um, so the GOD finance uh, programs, we have a few grant programs out there. Um, the reinvestment payment program, as well as the South Dakota jobs program is a rebate of sales and use tax. So that is something that um, comes into to the business. Uh, ag processing facilities are eligible for those and it's a percentage of the sales and use tax that you have paid on the equipment costs that will get returned to you basically. So um, the reinvestment payment program is for large projects. Those are usually over 20 million. Uh, the jobs program is anything under 20 million. Um, so that's kind of the difference between those two. Otherwise, they're, they're both the rebate programs for that. Um, a second uh, grant program that we have is our local infrastructure improvement program. And that is for cities and counties to essentially extend um, water and sewer lines. So if you're looking at a new construction project and you need upgrades to those um, water or sewer uh, lines, the, the county or city can apply for, for that grant to get some help help there. Um, another grant we have is our workforce development grant, and this is for training. And I think this might come in um, handy when you guys are looking at uh, training some meat cutters um, once the business is up and operating. So um, several different grant programs that we have at, at GOED that can help you. Um, additionally, and I'm sure if anybody's interested in meat processing, you've already heard about the Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources uh, meat processing grant. So that is open until um, May 1st. I'm looking at the notes here. Uh, that is when May 1st is when that grant round closes. So Governor Nome has set aside uh, $5 million of the Coronavirus Relief Fund for meat processing businesses looking to either expand facilities or to get some new equipment. So um, check out the Department of Agriculture's uh, website, sdda.sd.gov. Um, the information on those meat processing grants is out there. There's a link on what's happening now on the Department of Agriculture's webpage. I did not find that 
on um, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources website, but I'm sure it's out there. Um, and as you guys know, those two agencies are combining. So um, it might take you a couple clicks to get, get the right agency there, but it, it is out there on the Department of Ag's website. And then finally, moving into uh, the loan programs at the Governor's Office of Economic Development, we do have um, several loans. One of our direct loan programs is called the Value Added Agribusiness Relending Program. That is not available for production agriculture. So meat processing facilities falls directly under the eligibility criteria there. Um, that provides a low interest of 3% and it can go up to 250,000. So depending on, you know, if you're just looking at expanding or just looking at getting some new equipment, that program might be um, ideal for you. Um, obviously some of the larger projects and new construction, um, some of the other programs that we have might, might fit better. Um, another program we have is called our Rural Development Ag Loan Participation Program, and we partner with a local bank. Uh, we can go up to 500,000 on that one. The interest rate is a little bit higher on it. We're at four and a half percent. And the project does have to benefit South Dakota farmers and ranchers, which most of these programs um, or most of these types of projects would definitely be doing. So that shouldn't be an issue with um, making sure that it's eligible there. Um, some of the maybe non-conventional financing programs that we have um, is our agribusiness bond or the livestock nutrient management bond. So you can't use both of these bond programs for one project, but you can use either one of them for a meat processing facility. So an agribusiness bond is for processing and manufacturing businesses. What we call the livestock nutrient management bond is for solid waste disposal portion of projects. So I'm gonna venture a guess that most of these ag processing businesses would probably qualify for the agribusiness bond. The benefit of tax exempt bonds is a lower interest rate to the project and exempt interest income for the banks who are financing the project. So it's kind of a twofold benefit. The bank who finances the project is getting benefits as well as the project because of those tax savings. So something to look at on larger projects where bond proceeds could be more uh, beneficial. Um, and one thing to keep in mind too is if you're looking at financing maybe with a, a federal agency, whether that's SBA or um, uh, rural development, you, you can't federally guarantee a federal tax exempt bond. So this is one of the reasons we want you to work with business development reps ahead of time so they can make sure that they relay all of this information to you ahead of time. Because um, there are federal regulations that we do have to follow. Um, so we want to make sure that you guys are, are following all of those and we are as well as the issuer of these bonds. Um, several other programs we have is the microloan. Um, that is at 3% interest and up to 100,000. So this would be um, maybe a, a new equipment purchased or some of those smaller projects. Um, the SD Works loan can also come in to play on some of these. And that one does actually do some working capital and um, construction costs if it's needed at the, at the beginning. Most of our programs are takeout financing. So the bank would do the interim. Uh, GOED would come in uh, once the uh, construction financing or interim financing is complete and essentially buy down that bank loan. And then one of our uh, most popular programs is the ready, ready loan. And that can be um, used for ag processing and manufacturing business as well. The benefit of that program is 2% interest rate. So very favorable there. Um, that's also takeout financing. So you wanna make sure you have your ducks in a row at the beginning. So the bank does all the con uh, construction financing and then ready would come in on the permanent side of that financing. So I think the, I think the bottom line here is GOED is supportive of uh, meat processing businesses. We have a ton of programs that are beneficial. Um, it's one of our, our main industries is value-added agriculture. 
and, and within that uh, livestock processing. So um, I, I think, Kyle, did I miss anything? I think that's all I needed to cover. I know there's, there's a lot of programs. Our website is one of the, the first links that I put in the chat section. If you click on that, it would take you to the GOED website. And if you toggle down towards the bottom, um, we have a financial programs link in there that would take you to all of these programs. Um, I know it can probably be overwhelming looking at all of those, but the business development rep that you're working with will have a really good idea on what program um, fits your project the best, whether it's um, construction, whether it's equipment financing, whether it's all of the above, but we would encourage you to work with your business development rep to, to help identify what programs fit you the best. So with that, I will turn it over and see if there's any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Terry and Kyle. Are there any questions? They can come in through the chat or the Q&A portion. I know it was a lot of really good information. It might take a minute to digest some of it. <laughs> I got a question from Neil here, Christina, that uh, he'd like me to um, send this document over to him. And is there a way where I can share it to everybody or should I give it to you and you forward it on? Because it is a handy document that we'd like to share. Matt, is there a way that we can share a document on this? We got a couple questions coming in here too. Um, Unless there's, it's like a link somewhere. I don't know. Okay, we can. Um, I mean, we can out. get it. We can get it sent out afterwards to everybody that's um, on the attendee list. Okay. okay. So it looks like Robert's got one question. Are freezer carts included with the grant in the grant? Um, Terry, do you want to speak to that? Do you know if they are or not? I am going to assume, and I and I answered that I think on there that it would be considered as equipment. Um, if you're in doubt, I would definitely include it. And if they don't feel that it's eligible, they'll kick it out. But if and that's I'm assuming the the ag processing grant that you're talking about through the Department of Ag and Natural Resources. Um, and that's through a different agency. So I can't speak to it specifically like I know, but if it was coming through us, we would consider that as equipment. Yeah, if we're if we're talking about the the five million dollar grant program, yeah, that would fall under the equipment, um, and that, as we discussed last week, would definitely fall um, definitely be eligible in that um, in that program. Um, looks like we've got a question from Clay. It says, how confidential is this application process? Is, if a business plan is submitted, does it go out from this process? So I can speak to that a little bit, Clay. Um, it's completely confidential. When we're working with producer or for with uh, business owners, you know, we don't share anything until a loan is approved. Once a loan is approved, and Terry, correct me if I'm wrong here, then it is public because these are taxpayer dollars we are using to fund the loan. Um, so after you're approved, then it would be public to see who uh, received the loan. Yep, and just to add on to that a little bit, our board meetings are public meetings. So anybody can uh, call into those meetings. They're typically conference call. When we discuss specific projects and specific financials to projects that is done in executive session. So none of the public is involved in any of that stuff. All, all financial information is kept um, confidential at all times. And maybe to speak to the financing piece a little bit, you know, what I tell people is we are not a bank, you know, we don't lend to build our portfolio. We lend for economic development. And so, you know, we have a tendency of maybe approving more riskier deals than a bank would just because we're trying to grow economic development. You know, the money doesn't do us 
any good in the fund. We want to spread it out in the communities in the state. So these businesses are thriving and generating income and jobs. All right. I guess I had a question um, for Terry when it comes to the training grant that you had spoken about. Is there any kind of um, restrictions on that uh, for the types of training? Like, does it have to be through specific entities or is it kind of open for how that training can happen? Um, it is for profit and or nonprofit businesses. Um, they have to be expanding their workforce and training is for a new skill. Um, there is minimum wage requirements. And I, if you can tell, this isn't my program, so I'm reading off of a cheat sheet. Um, and if upgrade training, employees must receive increase in wage. So if it's training to get a boost in what they're going to be doing, they have to get an increase in, in uh, wages there. Um, and it looks like it's $1,000 per employee is the maximum. So that probably is dependent on how many hours of training is, is needed and desired or recommended or uh, by the employer. But it doesn't matter where they get that training from, if it's a online vocation. I don't believe so, anything. no. Okay. I think that's one, that's a big concern of people that are wanting to start uh, these businesses too, is what I hear repeatedly is, well, how do we find the workforce? You know, people don't, we don't have meat cutting classes in the technical colleges anymore. Um, so how do people that don't hunt deer every weekend, like I do, how do they know how to cut up animals? And so um, this workforce development grant is a great program. Um, and what we would like to see is somebody come, a third party come into the business to train these people rather than doing your, the training yourselves. You know, we would like to see someone come in to do that training, uh, more formal training than, than informal, but uh, we're flexible with that program too. Yep. So yeah, just, just the plug. Thank you, Neil, for that. Uh, SDSU is working on a, on a training program for skills as well as Western Dakota Tech. So um, those would be coming up. So hopefully those would fall under that eligibility there. They could, people could take our programs and, and take advantage of that grant program. Absolutely. A uh, question from Clay, is the meat processors grant only for current meat processors, i.e. is it worth to submit a grant application for people who want to assist meat processors? Um, so the, the $5 million grant program, that one, um, it's not necessarily specifically for the processors right now, um, but the money needs to be able to be spent very rapidly and needs to... Um, very quickly benefit the production in South Dakota. So it, you know, if you're wanting to kind of put it towards building your plant, um, it may or may not be approved um, just based on how quickly we're going to see a turnaround in the investment there. Any other questions coming in from the chat or Q&A? So what I'll do is I'll drop my contact information in this chat. And if somebody does want to call and talk offline, I'd be happy to do that too, if you have some more questions. Uh, Neil says, we need to hire veterans. The new GI Bill will pay for housing and training and a stipend. Uh, it's for GI after 20 or 2002. Um, these guys can find jobs with their ACAP programs and we can figure out how to reach them. And that is a very good point. Um, I know a lot of programs are, um, some of these, some of these programs through the colleges and, um, I know Lake Erie Technical College as well is working on something as well, um, with, uh, apprenticeships and stuff like that. And one of the target audiences with that is definitely veterans. So very good point, Neil. All right, so yeah, we have Kyle's um, information in the uh, chat there if anybody needs to get a hold of him. Um, and um, we will work on getting that um, document sent out to everybody on here today um, once this is all wrapped up. So 
Um, if there are no more questions, like I mentioned at the beginning, this will be recorded or this is being recorded. So um, it should be available again to rewatch in a couple of days if you missed something. Um, otherwise, feel free to reach out to any of us um, and we can kind of get you pointed in the right direction. So thank you very much, Kyle and Terry, for your time today. I appreciate you talking to us. So um everybody else invitation. yep yeah thank you um everybody else remember we'll be back again next week next friday at noon and we'll be talking to some gentlemen from the usda rural development about their programs oh it says kyle's information didn't show up oh kyle you put it to the panelists we'll get that fixed <laughs> oh okay I think I got it figured out here. I'll just drop it real quick. Okay. So don't okay. Do it. There we go. Or, there it okay. is. And we'll leave this up for a minute or two. Um, so everybody has time to get that information down. So um, again, thank you everybody and hope to see you online next week. Thank you guys. Thanks.